It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the uh, uh, Miami Coral Cam up. It's been just so active and beautiful lately. I mean, look at all this fish and all this activity going on. Um, in fact, uh, it's either feeding time or there's a predator nearby. That's how you, they're very active like that. Anyone know what that uh, yellow fish is with the, uh, where is it right here? These are, there's a bunch of these around there. Anybody can name this particular fish here? And uh, even that one right there, I think that's a Sergeant Major, I'm pretty sure, but what are these right here? Oh, see, what I tell you, predator. And here comes a, uh, is it a trigger fish? I believe it's a trigger fish right there of some sort. Yep, must be a predator around. Oh, well, I'm not here to talk about fish. And, you know, maybe I'll start a show about uh, fish. <laughs> I don't know what I'll talk about, how they swim. Well, let's take a look at the uh, spot prices here <clears throat> and uh, see what we're looking at currently. And I'm going to do a quick uh, refresh on this screen because I haven't refreshed in a few minutes. But it looks like overall things are kind of up here. Uh, we've had a low of 1773, overnight low uh, since the close yesterday in New York, and a uh, high of 1785. We're currently sitting uh, at 1779, closer to the high from last night. So markets are up a little bit, uh, about 11 cents on gold, big, big deal. Uh, again, great opportunity to buy the dips in my opinion here. Uh, silver currently sitting at uh, 2240. Uh, again, uh, 2227 was the low, 2250 was the high. Uh, it looks like the uh, lows today are a little bit higher than they were yesterday. Uh, let's see what happens towards the end of the week. This is December and, <clears throat> you know, again, let's see what happens before the uh, year ends here. Uh, but we are seeing some strength here. I was kind of ex halfway expecting that we might have seen that uh, $21 mark and maybe even dip in that sub $20 mark, but uh, not yet. They haven't monkey hammered it yet. but. Uh, I, I suspect they will or they may. Uh, again, just speculation on my point, but I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, if they do monkey hammer it down even below that $22 mark, uh, great opportunity to buy no matter where they uh, monkey hammer to. This is just opportunity. Uh, and I know a lot of the Wall Street apes out there uh, um, say that. They can, that's one of the consistent things they say. This provides a great opportunity to buy the friggin' dips and uh, buy physical silver. And speaking of physical silver, I want to talk, we're going to talk about third party risk. We're going to talk about IRAs here in a little bit as well. Uh, a couple of subjects I think are real important we touched on yesterday. And, uh, uh, and folks out there that actually have some of these IRAs that I'll be talking about need to know this stuff. It's very, very important. Uh, but let's finish talking about precious metals here. 93870, uh, 963 the high, currently sitting at that 95980 level. Um, you know, I was surprised to see uh, platinum even almost go down to that low nine level. Do I get 929 or 920 something yesterday? Uh, was a low over the day. <clears throat> but again, great buying opportunity. I think platinum is also super cheap. Uh, palladium, uh, uh, and why talk about it? Hardly anybody buys it. Uh, let's move over to the 24-hour uh, charts and just kind of see where things happen, uh, not necessarily when um, or, or what happened last night in the markets, not necessarily where it happened because it's hard to tell on some of these things. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Here's the last. Uh, here we are right now. You see that little green point right there uh, opening in New York market. And look where the smackdown occurs in gold. Right here, take a look at this. Uh, it appears to be up in the London market because I doubt that's Globex. The only time you see activity, and this is probably Globex right here. <laughs> uh, again, Globex is owned by CME, uh, and to me, they don't have much credibility. Uh, trades that I see done on Globex, or I've heard that are done on Globex late at night in thinly traded markets, are simply there to spoof uh, uh, gold and silver markets. So, uh, <clears throat> as I've said many times, I sure like to see. Uh, if any of these trades that we're seeing, you see that line downward, are these trades uh, like this, is this happening in the Globex market or is this happening in London market or the Hong Kong markets? Uh, I'd have more faith if I saw that down line knowing that it happened in Hong Kong, maybe not so much London, but uh, if this kind of uh, downtrend in precious metals was uh, caused on the Globex market, then I'm sure in my heart, in my mind, in my opinion, I am sure it's crooked. Anything done on New York uh, on the comics markets with precious metals nowadays seems to be on the manipulative crooked side. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, you know, speculative and uh, uh, just an opinion, but I suspect this kind of stuff in the evenings, uh, you know, when no one's really trading precious metals on these markets, uh, happens in the uh, Comex Globex market. But I could be wrong. Again, I've been asking out there, how do you look and see uh, what particular 
uh, a casino, you know, whether it was the Globex Casino, the Hong Kong Casino, or the London Casino, uh, that the trade took place that caused this kind of down action here. Uh, and again, I guess I could ask the same thing about what happens with this up action, but we know where this happens right here. We know that this down line right here is the New York comics, the crooked comics markets. Uh, and I hate to say that, man. It's, it's, it's a shame that I have to feel that way, but uh, COMEX uh, and, the, and their regulatory uh, CFTC, uh, well, I've never had faith in government uh, uh, regulatory commissions anyway, uh, especially since uh, I watched the Bernie Madoff special. <laughs> but no less, uh, my faith in uh, COMEX is uh, pretty much, uh, credibility, uh, if I was going to have a meter from zero to uh, 100, the credibility uh, for COMEX is nearing that zero point. And it's not just me, folks. It's been happening for decades and decades of them not addressing or taking care of this crooked action on their own markets. It's, it's their casino. Uh, and of course, people can say they can make whatever rules and enforce whatever rules they want at their casino. That is true to some degree. Uh, I'm not going to argue that. It is their casino. If they want to have crooked players in a crooked market, um, but, you know, it hurts other people. At what point uh, does it become a crime? At what point does it become, uh, 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 you know, fraudulent, you know, in the eyes of the law? Uh, uh, when it starts hurting people that aren't aware that this market is rigged uh, to, to benefit the uh, big commercial banks, uh, the big players, the big whales, so to speak. Uh, but no less, I digress. Let's take no less, I digress. I like that. Uh, let's take a look at the spike downward, and we got a spike back upwards again, which surely happened in the NYMEX markets here. Uh, the equilibrium going on right now. A little tug of war that's, you know. <clears throat> Most of all the smackdowns I've seen for years and years and years, uh, especially with silver, were always heavy handed and they typically were on Fridays, uh, Sunday nights, uh, Monday mornings or during holiday, uh, holiday uh, you know, hours when markets were really thinly traded, Chinese holidays, they would do smackdowns. Uh, so there were, was definitely a pattern where you saw in the COMEX markets uh, gold and silver getting smacked down. Again, in thinly traded sessions, large positions sold that no one in their right mind would sell, sell unless their sole intent was to drive the markets down. Uh, and again, JP Morgan got caught spoofing these markets. Other, I think, who was the one out of uh, Germany, uh, whatever it is, another bank, Deutsche Bank or something, got caught spoofing markets. Uh, folks, they spoof these markets. And again, uh, I'm not saying that this is a spoof right here, but if you sell a large quantity of, of silver or, or gold in a uh, thinly traded market that no one's picking up the buys, it's just going to fall, 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 fall. And uh, you, what is your intent on doing that? Are you just there to lose money? No, the only potential intent on that uh, for doing that would be uh, uh, just to drive the price down. Again, I'd like to sure see who does these trades and who, who does these large gold and silver trades on the Globex markets. Um, you know, I'd like to see specifically who does it overnights because now instead of uh, happening in the uh, uh, Sunday nights and uh, holiday hours, and, and we're going to get into that as well. There's an article over here that points out some things that I want to talk about. But uh, the, uh, when we see these markets getting hit like this, uh, I mean, it, it is. It's the big commercial positions, the big commercial banks being, uh, and, and, and COMEX is allowing them to do it. I'm just repeating myself at this point, folks. You've heard me say this over and over and over again. Again, credibility uh, for the CME group and COMEX uh, for a vast majority of uh, gold, silver, precious metals people is uh, getting down to that zero point. Uh, let's tell you, I hope they fix it at some point. You know, if they want to maintain their stealth, their credibility, they're going to need to do that. 24-hour uh, spot, silver prices, uh, same thing. Uh, again, good opportunity to buy these dips when you see it. It looks like it's back up again from, but look, New York, of course, bang, right in New York. Uh, overnight markets kind of were sideways a little bit, except about right there. That looks about the same time that, that gold got hit. Let me see. Uh, let's take a look at that 24-hour uh, line right there, and that is right in that center line of Globex. And uh, where are we? Yeah, look at that, both gold and silver at the exact same time. Uh, again, was that in the Globex markets? Uh, I think it probably was. So, uh, the crooked COMEX Globex market. <laughs> Uh, again, that's my opinion, folks. Uh, you can make your own opinion, but you know, I'm sure that a lot of you are starting to think like I am. Uh, it's just a manipulative, crooked market. But all markets are like that. As I've always said, uh, you've been manipulated since the day you've been born. You just need to figure out how and why and the best way to uh, work it for yourself. You know, now Learn how the game is played. Uh, learn who the players are. Once you've done that, uh, you're going to become a much better player. And that's what I'm here to teach you, how to be a better player. 
uh, and not to panic either. <laughs> so, especially when you see down prices in precious metals, just don't panic. Just smile and know that it's an opportunity for you to buy or for some other lucky devil to buy. Uh, let's take a look at the market watch here. Uh, Dow, this is just, phew, man. This is what happens when you just endlessly pump money into a system. Uh, this is the Fed's doing right here. The reason that the Dow's back, you know, there, there is no strong fundamentals behind any of these companies, all right? It's mostly buybacks. It's mostly just more money being poured into that market. Um, what's, what's the coolest thing Apple has come out with in years? Certainly not a phone. <laughs> Certainly not a phone, all right? They've not been innovative. I still got my old Apple phone. I don't plan on buying anything new. It's supposed to be a new greatest is supposed to be coming up, but you know what? Uh, that market's dead. I know Apple's you know, uh, rumored to be working on a car and some other products. Uh, that is what might make Apple stay great you know, into the future, is that uh, they uh, innovate, all right? But innovation with Apple as of uh, late, no, and their stock continues to go up. Uh, Tesla stock. Why is Tesla stock going up? Hey, listen, makes a beautiful car. I really like the guy a lot, uh, but no less. Um, well, what are the fundamentals behind it? The car is nothing really special. I take a look at them. They're kind of pretty, but it's the same design year after year. They don't really change the design. Someone looks like they just took a laptop screen and just stuck it right on the dashboard. That's not attractive to me. Uh, you know, again, not banging Teslas. They are a beautiful car. But what makes them so special? What it makes Tesla valued so much more than GM and Ford and those guys who can really produce a large amount of cars and who really have the production facility, you know, uh, facilities and who really have the engineering skills to do this, all right? Why is Tesla so high? Because people keep throwing money into it. Mostly people throwing money into the man. You know, uh, I got to say one thing about uh, Elon Musk is he is like the, uh, uh, oh God, who's the guy that ran the carnivals? P.T. Barnum. He is the P.T. Barnum of, of uh, business of our age. He really is, uh, in my opinion. So, and I like him, and I think at some point when I see Tesla take a giant shit, um, I will, uh, um, and they all will, not just Tesla, they all will. Everything's going to take a giant shit in this market. Uh, at some point here. Look, it's just the, uh, it just continues to go up. At some point, everything that goes up must come down at some point as far as uh, uh, these kind of things in the markets. Look at that. It's just insane, folks. Um, however, where was I going with this? Um, man, I was talking about markets being rigged. Sorry about that. And I kind of got a little sidetracked. But this is all just, you know, Fed money being pumped into the system. And where does that money go? Anywhere to look for a return. I mean, look what people are buying in NFTs or something. Someone bought a piece of artwork at a Sotheby's auction for millions of dollars that was on a, I don't know, what was it, an encrypted piece? Come on, man. That's what happens during the end times of a, <laughs> of a uh, social and economic collapse. And I believe we're pretty much near the economic collapse now. Will the social collapse after after that? Most likely. Uh, again, my opinion. Uh, Bitcoin seems to have bounced up a little bit uh, back to where it was. And uh, eh, not really back to where it was, but it's in that 52. Look at that right there. Talk about volatility. Um, man, if you like casinos and you're a good card player and you like this kind of volatility and you can study these charts and got to get a feel for what's really going on, uh, there's no fundamentals here other than the fundamental of the uh, greater fool than I theory that, that the more people that put money into Bitcoin, the higher it goes. The more people that pull their money out of Bitcoin, the lower it goes, okay? Um, so. Uh, more or less, uh, that's what you look at that. Oh my gosh, uh, where was this down? 41,000, it looks like they made a high here and then they're back down to where they are right here. Uh, we've not seen the end of Bitcoin, but you know what? Uh, it's, it's not a viable place for anyone that's looking to secure. The, if you're looking to uh, uh, secure your wealth and you're looking to uh, uh, have an insurance policy in the future that you won't lose it all or that you, you know, and it's not a great gamble, you're going to stay with gold and silver. Gold and silver are the greatest wealth preservation assets, in my opinion, on earth. Uh, bar none, bar none, greatest wealth asset protection on earth, bar none, okay? Uh, Bitcoin can't even come close to that. And plus, the volatility of Bitcoin is just freaking insane. It has no historical uh, long-range background where you can say, all right, Bitcoin's been around for 100 years. I think I can start to really trust that it. it's going to continue to be around. We just don't know this. It's just has such a short lifespan. It's so new. It could just blow up and disappear any day. Um, however, 
I don't think so. I think Wall Street's adopted Bitcoin, and the problem with that, folks, is that Bitcoin was a cool, wild, wild west environment uh, prior to the big whales getting in there. Uh, and a lot of Bitcoin people said, oh, yay, 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 well, JP is involved with Bitcoin now, and, and uh, uh, Black, uh, oh, whoever is that big black marker, Blackstone, or whoever they are, uh, uh, they're involved with Bitcoin now, and all these big corporate entities, uh, you know, that's not a good thing, folks. What do you think, who do you think fucks around with the price of gold and silver? The very same people that just jumped into the Bitcoin market. So most of you are fucked, you know what I mean? Uh, and again, the problem with Bitcoin, unlike gold, is even though they can screw around with the price of gold and silver on a short-term basis, we know that gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years. It's not going bankrupt. It's not going anywhere as long as, long as you're holding on to it. And again, we're going to get into the, something about IRAs here a little bit I want to talk about. Uh, and these uh, uh, holding on to your gold and third-party risks, something really important for anyone that has an IRA in precious metals. Uh, but no less, uh, look at this volatility. Uh, this volatility to me is like a casino, you know, red, black, uh, uh, a blackjack table or whatever it may be. You're going to have your highs, you're going to have your lows, but when everybody walks away from the table, you've got zero, folks. Uh, but gold and silver, 5,000-year track record, nothing comes close to that, nothing. I challenge anyone to show me an asset out there that's been around for almost 5,000 years, uh, trusted, and has never gone to zero, and, uh, uh, you know, which? What asset? None. Uh, again, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section, really. <laughs> hey, uh, Seeking Alpha, I like this site. Pretty cool. I'm just kind of looking at an article here. Uh, this article is Comics at, at Gold at Crossroads, done by Sprott Money, uh, and it, in summary, is it has uh, by the way, you can read this for free on Seeking Alpha. You just go to latest news. You don't have to have a subscription to this site. It's really cool. I do have a subscription. Um, I'm finding it very useful in some things. But uh, uh, you go, you would go here to markets and just go to gold and precious, uh, gold and precious metals. And uh, there's all the articles. There's some good articles on here. Read them yourself. Uh, make your own determination of what you think is uh, useful for you. Uh, if you've got any questions about it, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments section. <laughs> the month of December is going to bring all sorts of news. I want to pack the comic gold price. Uh, yeah, once below 1760, the downside risk becomes 1720, and maybe even 1680. Uh, hey, chart guy, if you're out there listening, uh, uh, what's your th uh, figure? What's your thoughts on this? Once below 760, uh, where are they getting their information for this right here? What charts, and does it concur with your chart, sir? 1720, maybe even 1680. It sounds logical to me. Uh, however, it seems like it's having a hard time getting there. Uh, they're going to have to really monkey hammer the shit out of it one day to do that uh, before December, before the end of the month. Uh, <clears throat> however, the month's not over. A, uh, it's been, anyway, an uh, article you might want to read here by Craig Hempke from Sprott. And uh, uh, what's interesting here is I was talking about when they monkey hammer precious metals, all right? And take a look at this. You'll see that, uh, boy, I'd, and I talked about they do it during uh, mostly thinly traded hours, holiday hours, you know, when the Chinese uh, uh, markets are on holiday. Uh, in the past, that's typically where they slammed it, but I forgot to mention they also have slammed the price of gold and silver during uh, uh, when the Fed talks. And for, for example, things like this, and Sprott actually shows a chart that shows when the Fed talks, uh, that's when they strike sometimes. And again, probably overnight markets, Globex, to make every the perception that the Fed caused the price of gold to go down. Uh, what is the significance of these dates? Uh, there's a smackdown right there. FOMC concludes with the announcement that the Fed will begin to taper. Look at that. And folks, I do not believe that a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of people said, oh, the Fed's tapering, we're going to, uh, gold and silver people especially, uh, a bunch of gold and silver people said, oh, the Fed's going to taper, we better sell our gold and silver, which this would indicate happened. No. Here's what my opinion is. They know that these things are going to be come out. They know that the Fed's going to come out and speak on November 3rd. They know this beforehand. What do they do? They monkey hammer. Uh, the big, I believe it's probably the big commercial banks, they monkey hammer the price of gold and silver down uh, when the night before or during or shortly after the Fed speaks. And again, the latest U.S. consumer prices, they like not, on, not only do they like to monkey hammer the price of metals down uh, during uh, uh, holidays and uh, what used to be Friday nights and Sunday nights and, and uh, Monday mornings, uh, they also hammer the price down when the Fed talks or when there's big news out there that may look negative for gold. Of course, who are these people selling these large amounts of gold? Uh, maybe uh, as Ted, uh, or silver uh, in particular, Ted talks that uh, it's usually the uh, managed money that does. That would be hedge funds and such. Uh, 
Uh, but all right, I digress. I just wanted to point out that uh, not only is it uh, thinly traded holiday hours at the Monkey Hammer Metals, it's also when the, uh, the Fed or big economic news is about to be uh, uh, spoken about. Uh, and they usually plan it. I really do believe it's planned. It's not like uh, these sellers that you see, like this seller right here on November 3rd. Again, watch the news and go, oh my God, look what, oh, he's going to taper. Let's sell our metal. No. This was thought out well before that. Knocking this price down on that news was thought out before that. That's my opinion. Uh, but again, uh, it's hard not to be conspiratorial when these folks make it so easy for you to be conspiratorial, like Comex and CME, and they allow this kind of monkey hammering and crap to go on. Well, I want to talk about third-party risk. What is third-party risk? And uh, uh, interesting enough, I went to Investopedia, and it really doesn't talk about third-party risk in the, what, the way I want to uh, mention here. Let me get rid of that ad. There we go. Uh, third-party risk, key takeaways, third parties work on behalf of one or more of the individuals involved in a transaction, uh, that would be the closest we would get to a precious metal third-party risk. In the case of real estate transactions, blah, blah, blah. So more or less, when I talk about third-party risk when it comes to precious metals, it's talking about either having your money, having your metal, your gold and silver, let's just say what it is, having your gold and silver outside of your hands, outside of your home, outside of where you put it. Third-party risk is having someone else hold your gold for you, whether it's an ETF, whether it's, uh, um, you know, uh, whatever, that, even a friend could be considered third-party risk. A friend, your grandma, you know I've talked about this before. Uh, you know, if it's not in your hands, you really don't own it, folks. You know, possession is nine-tenths of the law. And I, I don't know if that's a real statement, but I heard it as a kid. Uh, I've, I've been saying that as a kid. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Then, yeah. But anyways, if you don't own it, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And why am I talking about this? Because we're going to talk about IRAs. There's something really interesting. I touched on it yesterday. Interesting and scary that happened uh, uh, recently. And uh, I've had some uh, experience with these things right here. I'm going to take a quick sip of coffee here. And uh, while I'm taking a sip quick, quick of coffee, here, take a look at some fish. <laughs> One sec. Hmm. Everybody looks happy. There still must be that predator nearby. That's why they're all very nervous. All right. Yesterday, I talked about, uh, uh, we read Ted Butler's article, by the way, and I uh, got a lot of good views, and uh, I really appreciate everyone watching uh, and giving uh, the thumbs up on that. Uh, as far as uh, uh, Ted Butler goes, man, he is wonderful. I think he's probably one of the smartest guys out there when it comes to uh, uh, how silver is manipulated and, and explain to us how the game is played and who the players are and uh, in the format that it's played too, or where it's played on the CME, you know, again, I call it the casino. Uh, good article. Super, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you can watch it and hear me read the article or just go to GATA.org, which is a free website. If you are a gold and silver stacker and you don't have GATA on your bookmarks bar, then you're really not getting all the data and information you need. Uh, but good article you can read for free, Ted Butler. Definitely read this, folks, if you didn't watch my video yesterday. Even if you did, reread it. Good stuff. Um, and this is what I wanted to get into. Uh, I only briefly touched on it. Now, I've had, I've always understood that IRAs uh, uh, with gold and silver, you either had to have it in an ETF or you had to have some complicated process where, where you had to go buy uh, or go have someone store your metal in a vault for you. Um, and uh, you have to pay them storage fees. So there's a lot of things here. I'm gonna tell you, when it comes to gold and silver, if you wanna own physical, don't buy it in an IRA. That's my opinion. I'm not an investment advisor, but in my opinion, it's a terrible way to buy gold and silver. The best way to buy gold and silver, if you're buying physical, is in your own hands. You have no third-party risk, all right? Which brings up this. There's, there was a company that came out, and a bunch of companies, they did, uh, they did YouTube videos, man. They were advertising everywhere how you can own your own gold and silver, and you can open your own IRA and store it yourself. All right. Uh, I had people come in and tell me in my store, hey, I'm going to do my own IRA. Recently, I had a guy tell me, well, that's what I did. I, so it frightens the hell out of me because it, it's a very shady area. Uh, the IRS really who can make the rules. And again, just because you think you're bending a rule with IRS, you're not at any time. They make the rules. They can even change the rules midstream. And remember with IRS tax court, you are guilty until you, unlike a regular criminal court system here in the United States, tax court, it's a fact, ask anybody, uh, you are guilty, you have to prove yourself innocent in tax court. That's a fact. 
you are not presumed innocent. You are, pre you are presumed guilty when you are in tax court and when you're dealing with the IRS, and you have to prove to them that you're not guilty, not the other way around. For, for any of you young folks out there, uh, remember this, okay? Uh, so let me move into uh, uh, what the article was. Couple stored IRA gold, and again, I don't have Wall Street Journal, but we don't really need to hold the whole report. This basically talks about what really happened here. And in fact, hang on one second, uh, did I? I thought I actually had a uh, little article I could read that to you about, but apparently this couple right here uh, had gotten a hold of that information and that data. Uh, Andrew McCulty uh, uh, and his wife, uh, Donna, uh, had uh, about $730,000 in IRA, as IRA assets, and I'm assuming they had gold and silver in their assets, and they, they did this thing where they opened up an LLC or something, and they, they held their own gold and silver. Apparently, um, and I knew when people told me this, I didn't argue with them, but I knew that there was an issue with this. I knew that, you, that IRS would not eventually allow this stuff. And the weird thing is, if you're out there and you're listening and you did one of these self-directed IRAs and you did it because you purchased that data or that information from a company, sue their asses. They gave you bad data, man. Go ahead and sue them. Whoever, whoever again, if you, if you got your own self-directed IRA, and you receive some kind of data from some company explaining how, or their video how, explaining how to do your own IRA and store it at home, uh, I would talk to your lawyer because you got bad information there. And again, that's just my opinion, okay? Um, uh, but you got bad information. And uh, I could see the appeal to having an IRA and holding it yourself. All of a sudden, no third party risk, and I get that. This is the reason that I will not own a physical, you know, uh, uh, well, anyways. This is why I prefer to own physical. There's no good reason to have an IRA anyway. They suck, if you ask me. I mean, some people, uh, it's the only way to put away tax income and stuff, but uh, it's when it comes to bars and that kind of thing, it's terrible. Uh, the, the only thing I would recommend putting away in an IRA is maybe an ETF, silver ETF and gold ETF, and, and a lot of people feel really that those suck too. Uh, and again, that there's just as much third-party risk there. However, what you're finding out here is that since you cannot legally store your own gold and silver in your own IRA, in your own safe, you can't do it, folks. It's illegal. You're going to be in big trouble. And anybody that's currently doing it, you need to find a way to, you got to call your tax attorney or an attorney and figure out uh, uh, how to undo uh, what's been done or how you screwed this up if you did this. And again, you probably heard it from someone else. You got bad information, and I feel really bad for you. Uh, so again, Anyone out there that has uh, one of those uh, IRAs that they're storing their own precious metals, uh, folks, uh, there's big trouble with that, and you may want to start looking at a, uh, a fix uh, for this trouble. Uh, again, probably a good tax attorney might be helpful. Uh, no less, don't do this. Don't do it. Don't consider doing it. If you heard someone doing it, tell them not to. If you heard someone that is, is going to try to hold their own gold and silver in their own IRA, uh, uh, and again, bad idea, always was a bad idea, uh, and I always knew it was a bad idea, and now it's proven to be a really bad idea. Uh, I feel for these folks too, man. Uh, someone just gave them bad information. The ruling disallows a scheme that was heavily promoted several years ago when radio and internet ads touted the benefits of using IRA assets to buy gold and silver and then store them at home or in a safe deposit box. Again, if someone charged you uh, 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 money and they gave you this advice, I would look at pulling a lawsuit on them as well because they gave you horrible, horrible advice, apparently. Uh, again, that's my opinion. Uh, promoters base pitches on the perceived ambiguity of the law, despite warnings from the Internal Revenue Service and legal specialists. Uh, again, giant red flags there, man, so they should have known, but uh, you know what? This cost them a lot of money. It almost cost them half of their their retirement, man, and that sucks. I hope they're able to find a good uh, tax attorney and uh, uh, turn that over somewhat. But the uh, IRS really needs to uh, come out and just make a solid ruling saying that that can't be done. Uh, but they don't. You know why? Because they'd rather catch you doing something wrong because there's more money in it for them. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Well. Uh, that is primarily what I wanted to talk about today because this is really dangerous stuff right here. Uh, and my opinion, I don't care who it is, buy gold and silver, hold it yourself. You don't need another company. I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's uh, 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 the president. And Well, I better not use that as an example. I don't care if it's, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, 
Anyways, I'm not even going to say God himself because uh, some of you are going to get pissed. But you get my point. I don't care who it is. If you don't have it in your hands, you don't own it. I don't care. Even your grandmother. If you don't have it in your hands, you don't own it. She does. Okay? What happens if something happens to grandma? Your stuff is gone. So third-party risk. Uh, and that includes ETFs. That includes... Uh, um, you know, even these new companies out there. I don't want to say, you know, but I see these new companies out there that are offering to be like uh, uh, crypto slash gold slash, you know, uh, we have the gold that's backed by crypto. That No, no, folks. You have your gold in your hands. Do not give your money or, or let other people hold your gold and silver, period. And apparently the law says now in an IRA you can't do it yourself. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to bring that up because, uh, boy, uh, it occurred to me overnight that this is really a bigger story than uh, people are talking about right now. And there are a large amount of people out there that have done this. Uh, I've had quite a few in my store people that have done this. So uh, I just wanted to put the warning out there. Well, let's move over to, uh, oh, how bad here. Uh, I did see this uh, right here. How a bad uh, IRA uh, caused these people money. I'm going to read this real quick here. Even though, hang on, a tax court in Rhode Island deemed that a couple who store their IRA bullion at home must pay over 300000 IRS in back taxes, the pair transferred 750000 of their retirement into, into a self-directed IRA in the form of an IRA LLC, also known as home storage or a checkbook IRA. A good part of the retirement funds went into physical gold and silver. And even though the couple did their best to follow the rules, they failed. Uh, and I'm going to read this as a quote. Mrs. McNulty, a registered nurse, was careful with her IRA's coins in the same way. She opened a bank account in the name of the LLC, documented the purchase of the coins, labeled the coins as belonging to the IRA-owned LLC when she put them in a couple safe. So apparently this lady thought she was doing everything correct. Remember, you're dealing with the IRS, okay? They can change the rules midstream. They can not make any rules and just make a determination when they want to. Uh, let me continue reading this. However, the judge ruled that her unfettered control of the coins if upheld, would be ripe for abuse. Hmm. More abuse than having a third party? I don't think so, but no less. He clarified what some saw as a gray area and said the law requires independent oversight of investments in coins or bullion by third party fiduciaries, so it doesn't allow for storage in a safe at home. Well, here's what I just said. This judge just made the rules up himself by, again, this is tap typical in IRS and tax courts, all right? They make the rules, they can change the rules, um, and you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And even if you prove yourself innocent, they're still going to find you. They're still going to bang you. That's what they do. Uh, all right. So, C, gold and silver storage in one's home as part of an IRA isn't necessarily illegal. Uh, again, who is this company that said that? Birch Gold Group isn't necessarily illegal, but it can complicate matters significantly. Uh, I'm not sure if that's their statement, but if it is, I'd like to see them back that up, uh, that comment. Gold and silver storage in one home as part of an IRA isn't necessarily legal. Uh, again, why would you say that? Back that up, and I would say to uh, Birch Gold Group, you need to back that comment up if you're going to put that up there. It, it, you're giving people the assumption that it may be legal, and I'm telling you, it's not, all right? Uh, but it can complicate matters significantly especially if the owners are trading the assets. An IRS audit showed that the husband engaged in prohibited transactions over the course of two years, which dissolved the IRA and incurred fines and penalties amounting to 40% of their total retirement savings. That's awful, folks. Uh, cases like these are examples of why Birch Gold does not recommend home storage. Or Okay, I guess they don't recommend that, but here, it's funny, they do recommend that they hold it for you. Now, I don't know who Birch Gold is. They're probably a good company. I'm not saying they're not. But again, folks, you know, don't let someone else hold your gold, even, again, no matter who they are, even your grandmother. So, you know, would I recommend you having Birch hold it too? No, probably not. I don't care who they are and how great they are. Uh, hold it yourself, folks. Eliminate that third-party risk. That's the whole point of gold and silver is that you can hold it yourself. It's real. It's tangible. You can put it in your hands. You can bury it in your yard. Well, let me move along here. I've got to tell you, I like this new website, uh, not new website, they've been around forever and I've got, to, uh, I've got to apologize for not reading more articles out of here. I'm going to start looking at silverseek.com and uh, uh, start reading some more of their articles, you know, like I do with uh, uh, Zero Hedge and Alpha, uh, Seeking Alpha and those other sites. So uh, uh, go ahead and uh, bring that in. Uh, give me one second, bring that to me, will you? I'm sitting here doing a video, sorry. I got someone waving something in my face here. And uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, uh, you could have just written that yourself. There you go. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, so, Silverseek. 
Uh, Silver Seek. Uh, I forgot where I was here. All right. Uh, I'm going to start reading some of these articles. There's some good stuff in here. I recommend that you bookmark this site too. It seems to be free. There's no charge for this. I'm sure they have a uh, uh, maybe they have a paid subscription on here, but uh, maybe not. A lot of good stuff out here. A lot of good articles. So expect to see me reading more stuff off Silver Seek. Uh, meanwhile, let's go to my old go-to ZH. This is get economic political stuff involved with it. And for those folks that don't like politics, I suggest you fast forward through here. And uh, some of you say, well, why do you talk about politics, Brian? Well, politics has a lot to do with where the gold and silver prices are going. If the political situation worsens, that means gold and silver goes higher. All right, so I do like to talk about things that are happening out there politically, even social, even, even the social environment out there. You know, when the social fabric starts to shred, that's good for gold and silver as well. So for, for folks that think that, that my politics side of this has no play in uh, gold and silver, uh, you're wrong. Uh, and also, uh, you know, if you like the other parts of my video, just fast forward through this. Um, stock storm and higher massive hedge fund short squeeze. Again, more, <laughs> all right, we, we talked about that. Uh, mainstream economists are struggling to hide the incoming economic collapse. Well, of course we know that, and that's basically corporate media. Corporate media is a single viewpoint narrative. It's, it's you know, this is what the way it is, this is the way it happens, and uh, uh, you're not going to get any other viewpoint. And typically, uh, corporate news is just going to follow what their government uh, masters tell them to uh, write, or what's the most popular thing, or puts the most TV advertising in their pocket. Uh, don't forget the X date, uh, quid iPhone, Procrit, Apple signed secret $275 billion deal with Chinese. Uh, Kathy Wood, she's from that ARC fund. Uh, apparently most of her investment is in with Tesla and that's the only reason that her ARC fund hasn't basically uh, taken a giant shit because Tesla's gone up uh, almost 100% in the last year. Uh, so that company could be in some trouble. But again, I'm outside my expertise here, so I'm not going to talk about that. However, when you see companies like this go down, I'm sure that's not going to be helpful for the market overall. Um, well, you know what? I don't see too much here to talk about other than, uh, oh, is this the lady that claimed she was an Indian? <laughs> you know, if anybody else did that, they would be buried under the uh, teepee. <laughs> so, but no, she gets a pass on it, apparently. Uh, I, and as far as economics go, I can't believe that... Uh, um, it, it's you know these, these people aren't very bright when it comes to economics folks so and again what's that have to do with gold and silver well if you have people that aren't very bright in economics running your government chances are gold and silver are going to do very well as well uh this is just sad you know what i got to tell you i went through a cold war we don't need to go through another one uh and again this is good for the gold price of gold and silver as well uh because when the fear level starts to rise um people are going to want to be in secure investments anything could blow up at any time especially uh, in a cold war. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's a lot of posturing and stuff, but uh, uh, Putin seems pretty adamant that uh, he doesn't want NATO in the uh, uh, Ukraine, and I can't blame him. You know, it's similar to when we, uh, when they put uh, missiles in Cuba. We didn't want missiles in Cuba, man. We made sure that the uh, Russians weren't going to put missiles on our side of the continent, and uh, meanwhile, we want to put uh, NATO missile batteries right next to their border. Come on. Can you blame them? Not really. Uh, this just goes to show you how the uh, war machine works. The, uh, it sucks our money as well. <laughs> uh, war, what is it good for? Absolutely fucking nothing. That's what war is good for, nothing. It uh, doesn't even do any good for the economy, except for the people that make money in war, the military-industrial complex. Uh, but I digress. And governments and government officials. Uh, U.S. trade deficit shrinks for first time. And uh, you know what? I don't see anything here more that I want to talk about. Uh, let's just kind of move down here. That's kind of weird, huh? Uh, but, you know, hey, listen, freedom. Let you do what you want to do. And uh, uh, this was pretty cool, too. But apparently the Chinese rover, what does this have to do gold and silver? It doesn't, but I like space, all right? Look at that. It looks like some kind of hut out on the dark side of the moon. moon. That ought to be interesting. I'm thinking it's a giant rock. But if it's a building, <laughs> it's going to be fucking weird. All right, never mind. Um, what's the late? Okay. Uh, let's just move over to here because it's a long video. My crew is calling me downstairs. They're actually coming up here to have me sign checks for them. That's what that little pause was in the shaking of the paper. Uh, and I usually tell them, leave me alone. But apparently there was a customer waiting for me to sign a check because I forgot to sign them ahead of time. 
Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Reddit Wall Street Silver for uh, uh, allowing me to post my videos out there and all the comments. They're always very cool and very polite, uh, a very civil place. And uh, go apes, man. Keep buying your silver, keep buying your gold, and make sure that you're holding it yourself. You do not want people holding your gold and silver for you. It's, you know what, it's one of those assets that that you can hold yourself. You don't, there's no good reason to have someone else hold your gold and silver. I don't think even an IRA is a good enough reason, but when you buy gold and silver, buy physical, hold it yourself. Again, I don't care who it is. Don't let other people hold your precious metals. There's no good reason for it. None, zero. Besides the fact that you're eventually going to get caught up in fees as well. And if you're holding gold and silver for a long-term wealth preservation for your re retirement, you don't want fees. After 10 years, 20 years, they're going to eat the shit out of you, okay? Uh, you hold it yourself. There's no storage fees if you hold it yourself. But again, be warned, avoid the IRAs that tell you that they can hold, you can hold your own metal yourself because that's bullshit and you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Uh, I'd like to thank again Comex. Uh, comics. <laughs> Yesterday's video, Comics called me. I don't want to thank Comics. Fuck Comics. Sorry about that. Uh, Wall Street Silver. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, QE Galore for his comment out there. I don't get a lot of them, but that was very nice. And he says, uh, talk with Chris Marcus of Arcadia e Economics. He knows more than you about what's happening. Uh, it's being done. Who does it? He tries to get it stopped. But in my opinion now that in the absence of actual responsible government, cheap precious metals are a blessing because it allows the rest of us to acquire our own stores of wealth and safety for what's coming. So maybe we shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. And that's a very good point there. Uh, we're changing the market dynamics thanks to price suppression. Given the free markets were destroyed long ago and aren't coming back, we may look back on this time as a relative blessing. Um, you know, you've got a very good point there. That, and of course, something I've been saying for years and years, if not decades, you know, is that uh, when they do monkey hammer it down, it just provides people an opportunity to buy the dip, buy at a better price, uh, and, and hold the physical themselves. So yes, now there is some comments that were made on my video yesterday, and I'm going to get over to that right here. Uh, where is it? And uh, uh, you know, give me some newest first. Let me see, is that yesterday's video? Yeah, that's yesterday's video. And I, let me get to this because it kind of ties in with that question on uh, uh, Wall Street Silver right there. Um, give me one second. There has been, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, here, Silverfan21 uh, points out, filing out complaints is a total waste of time. They already know what's taking place and then we can clearly see they don't care. They are paid to look the other way. So in my humble opinion, it's a waste of time and time is money. Um, and JP kind of agreed with them. It is not a waste of time, folks. And I'll tell you why I say this. We're such a small community. You know, if it was just a few of us, just a couple of us, like it has been for decades. I mean, there's very few people that were talking about silver manipulation 10, 20 years ago, except for the Ted Butlers and the guy from Arcadia, maybe, if he's been around that long. Um, and, and a few of us, all right, filing out a few complaints. But then it's getting bigger and bigger. And here's my problem with not filing complaints and also thinking that complaint complaining is a waste of time it may feel like it but it puts the pressure on them trust me on this if you don't complain you get what we have today in our current worldwide government you get shit government you get sh they lie to you uh, and they keep continually getting away with it uh, but when the discontent the complaints the complaints I'm gonna call discontent when the discontent and the complaints start to grow and grow and grow they have to change their tactics if they don't they're fucked so, is, complaint, is complaints a waste of time? Absolutely not. In fact, what does it take? It took me, what, five minutes to fill out that CFTC and the CME, you know, five or ten minutes each to fill out those forms. And uh, believe me, I got a call back, like I said yesterday, from uh, the CME group uh, an investigator, Mr. Reddington. Now, not a lot was said. I said more than anything. I explained my point. I was very polite to him. I explained what was going on, how they know all this stuff is going on. But believe me. They listen. They have to listen. And the more complaints they get, uh, uh, again, they may not do anything, uh, and, and they may not listen. However, it will blow up in their faces if they don't. The whole point of complaining is to get the word out there. So if you're not complaining, then you, you, you're part of the problem. Uh, and, I'm, and that includes government, too. If you're, not, if you're not taking the time to learn who you're putting in office, and you're not taking the time to learn you know, other than what CNN or Fox might tell you, if you're not taking the time to really learn this stuff, and you're not taking time to make complaints uh, to your uh, uh, elected officials and your unelected officials, then you're part of the problem. 
Uh, and again, I don't mean that as a bad thing, sober fan. I, I, again, don't take that the wrong way. I'm just explaining why I think it's important to complain, why I think it's the grease, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease or the squeaky door gets the grease, whatever it is, all right? And again, really, thanks for watching, Silver Fan. But, and don't feel like complaining is a waste. It really isn't. It's worth it, even if it just gets it out of your system. And the more you complain to the uh, powers to be and to other people and you get other people to complain, that's powerful. Trust me. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to get the Wall Street Silver moderators to uh, form a group to start calling legislators and start calling. Uh, but for some reason, my, my calls out to the moderators just kind of went unanswered for whatever reason. I don't think it's anything bad, but uh, uh, I'm not sure they just even want to get involved with it. But the beauty of the Wall Street Silver Apes is that you guys got the numbers, man. You guys could, could absolutely make CME turn their heads or make comics turn their heads. Uh, or make the CFTC even turn their heads, make a legislator turn their heads. You guys got the numbers there, man, with Wall Street Silver. Uh, I just, uh, again, one more time, if you're a moderator or you're involved with Wall Street Silver, you guys need to do this, really, you do. Uh, take the power of your group while you still have it, while it's still here. Uh, and again, it may grow and grow and grow, but you know, nothing good lasts forever. But while you have this power, 172,000, uh, man, use it in a good way, not in a bad way. Use it in a good way to change these markets. You have the power to do something very powerful and good for the gold and silver markets, uh, WSS Silver and moderators. You have the power to do something wonderful. Take advantage of it, my opinion. Uh, and if you're a Wall Street Silver Ape, hey, ask them the same question in case they didn't see my, uh, uh, my video. <laughs> well, uh, yesterday's video is very good. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, uh, let me take a look and just see if there's any questions here I can answer real quick. Newest first. And, well, I won't make you dizzy. I'm sorry. It makes me dizzy doing this real quick. I'm going to get a sip of coffee, too, real quick. Uh, I'd like to thank all my uh, viewers out there and commenters for commenting and watching. Uh, you guys are great. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're ever in my neighborhood or my store, or in my air, not my store, if you're ever in my neighborhood, uh, make sure you come by and see me. Uh, not clips I made, the clip magazine mistake. God darn it. <laughs> oh, I know, I know the difference between the clip and magazine. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, and uh, tax court sounds like family court. I don't know about family court, but tax court is anything but fair. Uh, it really isn't. It's, it, the tax court's designed to uh, uh, extract every ounce, every bit of money you have out of your pocket in any way, uh, uh, any way shape, or form. And uh, again, in tax court, you're guilty until proven innocent. Um, hey, thank you very much. Great video. Thank you. Um, again, I, I, I explained this, why I think that's not true, why it's not a waste of time. Uh, God, don't like me. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Charles Swab just started adding six ninety five per each buy or sell over the counter. Uh, I started a day. Uh, yeah, those fees can really rack up, Joey, that's for sure. Uh, I'm with TD right now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Fed and JP are working together. Yeah, wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, uh, doubt that either. Uh, let me see if I can find any questions. And uh, uh, Troy says they call me and tell me silver's going to less than $18. Oh, that would be interesting if it did. But the problem, Troy, if it goes to $18, which I'm kind of doubting right now, you never know. Uh, I'm kind of doubting. But if it does go to $18, uh, I'm going to tell you the, the physical supply is just going to dry up completely. Uh, you know, people are going to be uh, calling my phones off the hook to buy at that level. Uh, I hope there's going to be product available, and I hope the premiums won't be too crazy. But again, I'm not sure we're going to see sub-20. Maybe. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching, Troy. Um, yep, there has been. I answered this a little bit earlier. Uh, someone had uh, uh, mentioned that I wasn't selling a product. Anyways, you saw yesterday's video. You know what this is all about. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate the... Uh, uh, you reminding people that uh, they are have been in my store and that I do have that local product. Uh, again, uh, thanks for watching, Brad. I appreciate it. Uh, banks are no longer too big to fail. Judgment is coming. Every negative move they make is recorded and will just add to their sentences. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see, Juan, I appreciate the comment and I appreciate you watching. I'm not sure we're going to see any, any people uh, tarred and feathered and uh, ridden out of town on a rail. <laughs> I just don't think that's going to happen. It's just going to collapse and these people go back to what they're doing, uh, trying to start a new scheme. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe Rock, I wait for the Sunday night paper shuffle. We'll see if it's Sunday night. It's not, as I've been saying, it's not always Sunday night. And uh, thanks for watching, Joe. I can't disagree with you about them being uh, bags right there as well. Uh, 22 million, uh, that's quite a lower than 30 million in 2020. 
uh, for this year, nine million old and 13 million, that is quite. Uh, max stack, I'm sorry, I'm just drawing a blank, so I'm not quite sure what that refers to. Let me know. Uh, again, I'm getting old, so my memory sucks. Probably something I said on the video. Uh, thanks for watching, Mac. Uh, my LC is paying $1.25 uh, under spot for generic coins, except for ASEs and Libertads, they pay spot. Um, you know what? Listen, um, that $1.25 under seems a little bit too less. You know, Mac, try to find another local dealer, you know, or just politely say to your dealer, hey, listen, I can do better by going over here. Can you match that price or get close to it? I'd rather deal with you. You know, it, sometimes it doesn't hurt to ask if they can pay more or sell for a little less. People ask me, and I, I don't, you know, I give an honest answer if I can or I can't. Uh, maybe your local dealer would do the same. If not, find yourself a second local dealer to deal with. Um, hey, thanks for watching, Mac, and I hope you get to work that out and find a, another guy that'll work with you or your company. Or the one you're dealing with uh, uh, decides to uh, uh, amp it up a little bit for you. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Thanks, oh, thanks, Mr. Boater. And uh, the leader manipulating this drive down prices cheaper. We should all be buying. I agree. Just buy the dips. That's my opinion, of course. I'm not a financial advisor, but I like buying the dips, especially in precious metals. And I like owning it myself. It's, no one else is going to hold it for me. I don't let other people hold my metal. Uh, although, that's not 100% true. I'll tell you about something later. But uh, I do have a Sprott fund, but I've lost money. I put Sprott away in my, in my ETF Sprott uh, back when Sprott first started their very first, you know, their ETF for silver, and it's worth half the value. Uh, and silver was only 15 bucks an ounce then. And why is that? Why is, is these ETFs, Sprott and all these ETFs, not a good deal for long-term wealth preservation? Because you will get eaten up in fees like I did. And that's not their fault. I should have known that. But I put it away for 10 years or whatever long I did, didn't pay attention to it. And I'm thinking that, you know, silver at 25 bucks an ounce, at 23, it's going to be worth, you know, more than it was then. It's worth half, folks. I got eaten up in fees. Don't, don't forget that if you're putting away something. If you are getting an IRA and uh, uh, you are having someone store it for you or you've got uh, an allocated IRA like uh, 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 Sprott, uh, long term, you're going to get killed in fees. It just, there's no way around it. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, that's about it. Uh, what historical level does inflation cause mass capital inflow in the gold and silver uh, futures market? John, I don't know how to answer that, honestly. If I, if I did, I would. Uh, I don't know if there is a historical level. Uh, I, for sure, there would be a historical level when you get into hyperinflation. Hyperinflation means that uh, where, where the prices go up 50% every month. That's the, uh, the definition that I read from Investopedia. All right, so if we saw hyperinflation, true hyperinflation, you know, again, prices of uh, basic goods go up 50% every month, month after month, uh, that's when you'll see huge uh, inflows into uh, precious metals, and uh, kind of like Venezuela. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. I advertise to be at MexJMSD Bullion. They're the three larger, more reputable uh, online sellers out there. And I'm not saying there's not some sellers out there that sell cheaper than them, uh, but no less, big, reputable, and the most popular out there. I advertise to beat them. I advertise to beat the local guys. Uh, if you got any questions, and remember, I only deal local. So if you don't live in South Florida and you can't come and buy from me, you need to find yourself a good local dealer. Find yourself another handsome, smart guy like like myself, <laughs> and uh, you'll get a good deal. Uh, again, keep that money local. I can't stress that enough, especially in these economic times. Uh, spend your money local. I don't care if it's cars, tires, precious metals, jewelry, whatever. Buy local if you can. Well, that's it. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. Thanks for watching, and have yourself a great day. Bye now.